How's it going everybody and welcome to the next episode of Splattercats Indie Shorts. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dungeon Hearts by Cube Roots. It's a puzzle RPG hybrid, very similar in fact to the later released 10 million, although this one introduces a new type of gameplay which is also slightly rhythm based and also you can match kind of vertically and horizontally. But let's take a look at the game and see what's so unique about it. The first thing that a player is likely to be shown when in-game is the four-stringed guitar neck scrolling feature that's become so kind of familiar from other rhythm-based games like Guitar Hero and so forth, but what may be a little bit different is the fact that you're confronted with a bunch of buttons of varying colors and party members on the left. You're given a fighter, a rogue, a mage, and a healer just to deal with that whole fantasy trope and make everything feel more familiar, and a color corresponds to each party member with red representing fighter, blue representing cleric, yellow representing mage, and green representing the archer. Now, dragging these around the fate stream is pretty easy, and matching them by threes turns the circles into a diamond, which is called a striker, which allows you to attack the enemy. Putting a striker on the same row as a skull or a debuff, which can usually be seen in gray, results in the destruction of that attack or debuff. Those pieces with the skulls and the other little symbols on them are your enemy's attacks, and if they reach the player on the left, the player that is hit will be the corresponding member of your party. So for example, if you've got a skull on the bottom row, that means it's going to be an attack that goes against your archer or your rogue. Now you can drag the debuffs and the attacks around too to make sure that they land on certain members of your party. And so that is an option. And strategy plays very, very heavily into this game. Matching three strikers of the same color, so yellow diamond, yellow diamond, and yellow diamond will result in a monolithic attack that wipes out the entire board. After defeating a monster, you'll be treated to a minigame in which you must match stars of corresponding colors, and getting three of them adjacent to one another and clicking will result in the level up of one of your party members. Now, this is a very important part of the game because if you fail to level up enough, you actually end up being a little debuffed when you get further into the game. These level ups also unlock attacks, which are very useful. These attacks range in usefulness and can be anything from heals to time slowing abilities to massive damage dealing attacks that can be leveled on your opponent. Each character has their own specific use and using them in the appropriate manner is very important for advancement past the most simple forms of the game. Every 10 levels or so, you'll be treated to a boss fight, which tends to be a much more difficult version of the other fights that you've been facing. Now, you probably know what that means. You've faced bosses in video games before. However, in Dungeon Hearts, you're going to be fighting them a little bit differently. Bosses tend to have tiles that can be seen nowhere else in the game. So, for example, some bosses have freezy tiles that'll actually lock down a player for a certain amount of time if you allow them to reach the left. Other bosses will employ new gameplay mechanics, namely if any of their attacks land on a character, it may also hit all of the adjacent characters. Some bosses have full cleaves that'll hit everyone all together, and some bosses will actually employ dots and things of that nature, so you never quite know what to expect. Additionally, bosses may have kind of themes, so if you're up against a big juggernaut type guy, he may actually have a higher probability of tiles which are unmovable. This can become a large frustration when you're trying to fiddle things around the board, but he simply won't let you. But I do like the way that the developers have managed to make the bosses thematically match what's going on with the fate stream on screen. In the sense of replayability, I think this is actually Dungeon Heart's very, very strongest point. A lot of puzzlers can get boring as you play through because, let's face it, if you've played one game of Bejeweled, you've probably played most of them, and I think that's a problem that persists with the puzzle genre in general. However, the developers have shown a remarkable amount of foresight in making it so that almost everything in this game is randomized, and I think the randomized boss encounters combined with the randomized enemies that you'll fight back to back do make the game very much different. Different. While there's no actual character development per se, which is something that I think would slow gameplay down to a crawl anyways, there's still times when it's much better to play your fighter in a certain way, and there's certain moments at which you know you should probably pop a heal from your cleric, versus other times when you just want to keep spamming attacks. Lending additional replayability to the game is the availability of a store. Now, as you play the game, you will accumulate XP, which can then be turned in for buffs to your characters, which will be active from then on. These passive upgrades do everything from slow down the fate stream, which is the scrolling of the game, to actually increasing the attack power and HP of individual characters. While some people would say that this removes the aspect of skill from the game, they're completely optional. I mean, you can just let the XP sit there and not buy them, but I can attest that you can make it almost all 
the way through the game without any of the kind of store buffs. And so that being said, I think the game is actually fully playable without any of them. Additionally, there's tons of bestiary information to look at. You can get backgrounds on all the characters, and you can also take a look at every single one of the tiles that are available as you encounter them. I think the Cube Roots has done a very good job of creating a game that's unique enough to stand on its own two feet in an oversaturated puzzle market. From the anime-inspired graphics to the variable gameplay to the multiple soundtracks that you'll unlock as you beat the game more and more, I think the game has a lot to offer, so at $2.99 it's definitely worth a purchase. That all out of the way, my name is Splattercat and this has been the next episode of Splattercat's Indie Shorts. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time. Take care out there everybody.